course, critical to the fire situation is the weather. And, in fact, we have extreme weather continuing to lash the country this weekend with severe storms sweeping across the east coast and warnings that Queensland may see the first cyclone of the season. While in New South Wales, Adam Morgan from the Bureau of Meteorology forecasts cooler temperatures will bring some relief for the firefighters. We certainly saw the uh, winds quite gusty yesterday afternoon, gusting to around 55 kilometres an hour through the Canberra region and just to the east, which helped fan those fires. Uh, to, overnight, we saw the winds die down quite significantly. We actually had calm conditions for a number of hours as a weak easterly change just moved up the ranges from the east. So today we're likely to see the winds return to the northwesterly direction and around 20 to 30 kilometres an hour, so a little less strong than yesterday. And the good news is that the temperatures are much cooler today as well, forecasting a maximum of 28 degrees in Canberra as opposed to the 36 that we saw yesterday. All right, that'll certainly be good news uh, for the people in involved there and the firefighters. Uh, let's look further afield. This weather has been very hard to predict. Um, and certainly on the east coast, we've uh, had very hot temperatures. Uh, yesterday, Sydney was hit with some severe thunderstorms. Uh, what was the result of that? Yeah, we've got an extraordinary amount of severe weather across the eastern half of the country at the moment, stretching all the way from that tropical low in the Gulf that we'll talk about in a moment, and then down along that uh, trough that extends all the way down into New South Wales. We did see severe thunderstorms yesterday. We saw a 109 kilometre an hour wind gust at Cessnock in the Sydney region. We saw 90 kilometre an hour wind gust yesterday afternoon at Horsley Park and two centimetre hail in the Blue Mountains as well. Now today we are still expecting severe thunderstorms through New South Wales. Wales, the focus shifts a little bit to the northeast, so through the central tablelands, the northern tablelands, the mid-north coast, the northern rivers, even down as far as the Blue Mountains. So damaging winds, large hail and heavy rain are all also at risk again today. For Sydney, the western suburbs are just a marginal risk. We're not so sure that they'll reach the, the eastern suburbs today as the focus of the storms moves further north, but we can't rule it out. So severe storms this afternoon through New South Wales, but also extending into Queensland, mostly along the trough through the interior of the state. Uh, damaging winds are the main risk through Queensland, and at the moment we're just not... We, we don't think they'll quite reach the coast through Brisbane, so they'll kind of form on the ranges, drift a little east towards Ipswich and the western suburbs, but probably not reach uh, Brisbane itself. And at a little further north, the, uh, the Northern Territory and also parts of the north of uh, Western Australia, some um, severe weather warnings there as well. Yeah, we do have a tropical cyclone advice current for the tropical low that's currently around 100 kilometres to the southeast of Borroloola in the NT. We did have severe weather warnings current for the tropical low yesterday. They've been cancelled overnight, but we are still seeing wind gusts of around 85 kilometres per hour around the centre of the tropical low. So while it remains over land, there's no real risk of it developing into a tropical cyclone. It's once it moves back out over the water of the Gulf of Carpentaria, which we expect it to do sometime on Sunday, that it really is able to access the energy from the warm water in the Gulf and may develop into a tropical cyclone, perhaps later on Sunday or early Monday morning. At that stage, we'd expect it to curve around to the northeast a little bit more and then head back towards the, the Gulf Coast in uh, Queensland uh, at some point on Sunday or probably Monday at this stage. But there is a lot of uncertainty in that track, particularly with tropical lows and uh, lower end category tropical cyclones. It really just does depend on how close they stay to the coast, how long they stay over land as to exactly where they move. And uh, so there's still uh, quite a way to go in terms of predicting this cyclone track or Adam, tropical low track. Just very 